As Bishop mentioned, our topic for tonight is ministry with young adults. It's actually our third session. We started with our ministry to children. Yun, mas tama yung here, tama yung una. Nanalagay mo. Yung ministry with the young adults, uh, which was uh, developed by William J. Cork, a uh, demon graduate, and uh, himself uh, an Adventist. No? So uh, it actually our third session in this uh, fa- uh, age level and family uh, ministries. So we started with children's ministries, and then the last time was with youth ministries. This session is with young adults. The next session will be with middle adults, and then we have older adults and then intergenerational ministry. So tonight, we will concentrate in ministry with young adults. Next slide. Yeah. What is a young adult? No? A young adult is a person between 18 to 35 in terms of the, the developmental uh, stages. But of course, you know that in our structure, in the Methodist Church, Ang 18 ay MOF pa lang, senior MOF, up to uh, 23. No? And then from 23 above up to 35, eh, young adult. Is, uh, uh, we call them young adults, which is the UMIF uh, age. Next slide. Yun. Yung young adult odd has its developmental perspectives. No? Next slide. Ayan. Ito yung developmental task of young adulthood. Ibig sabihin ng developmental means during this stage of uh, young adulthood, you should be able to uh, successfully achieve the following. Uh, first is developing a personal identity. Meron ka ng sariling pagkatao. No? He, hindi ka na bata na... Eh, sinasabi lang sa'yo kung sino ka, pero dito sa developing personal identity, by the time that you are a young adult, you should have established your own identity, kung sino ka talaga. So sinabi natin last time, ang critical stage of developing a personal identity is during adolescence or during UMYF stage. But uh, by the time you're a young adult, you should have your own develop your own identity. Pangalawa, which is very true of uh, young adulthood, is developing relationship. Palaging sinasabi na yung age ng young adulthood, yan yung age ng pag-aasawa. Yan. Yung developing very intimate relationships and, go, and, and to the point of uh, deciding to get married no, and raise uh, a family. Yung actually, uh, young adults uh, are young married couples. Uh, of course, some uh, choose not to get married, but you go to the next stage, they develop a meaning for work. No? Yung iba hindi nag-aasawa yung adults dahil nahook na sila sa kanilang career o sa kanilang trabaho. Yun na yung prime sa kanila or from their own decision, they they decide not to get married and live uh, the, their lives uh, single blessedness. No? Yung number four, developing a spiritual life. Now, umpisa yan dun sa, no, sa uh, youthhood or adolescence. But uh, uh, deeper and more mature spiritual life is a task of young adulthood. Kasi maraming challenges ang young adulthood, yun nga, yung developing a career uh, or and then uh, raising a family, yun. Those are very uh, important no, tasks of young adulthood. Okay, next slide. Yan. Si John Masterhoff, meron siyang theory ng faith development. Ay, ito yung tinawag niyang styles of faith. You, you start with an ex, experienced faith. Your experienced faith, ito yung 
kumbaga minahan mo sa iyong mga parents no uh, mapalad ka kung ikaw ay ipinanganak sa isang uh, Christian home no uh, yung iba sa atin hindi uh, malamang karma, uh, marami sa atin ay panganak sa unchurch na na tahanan or sometimes no uh, some are born into single parent uh, families na, na ang kanilang experience sa pananampalataya ay hindi ganun ka-strong o ka-stable. And then you get to have an affiliative faith. No? Ito yung the faith of, uh, of childhood the faith of childhood alam mo naman ang faith ng childhood kung anong sinasabi ng mga significant adult sa iyo yun na yung ano kung sino yung guardian mo yung uh, parents mo father mo mother mo lolo mo kasi iba na single parent uh, na ipinanganak sa single parent ay ang nag nagkukupkup sa kanila ay mga lolo at lola which are grandparents so you yung affiliative faith, the childhood faith, is really simply obeying, is li- simply obeying or absorbing what the faith of significant adults are in your life. Yung searching faith, ito yung adolescent faith, sabi nila. Kasi ito yung stage na nagsasearch yung mga adolescents kasi na napusot dan kung natayo, kadigiti parents, no? their significant relationships are with their fellow youth or fellow adolescents. And it's a time dahil sa rapid changes ng kanilang uh, development o sa kanilang body and uh, thinking, ganyan, in exposure no, sa media, sa different uh, influences, they try to search their faith na ano ba talaga ang totoo tungkol sa Diyos? Yan. And in their search, they come up with some answers. Kaya karamin karamihan ng uh, conversions, actually, sa statistically kalamihan ng conversions happen, happen during uh, kab- ano yung panahon ng kabataan. Dahil dito, nagsusearch sila kung ano ba talaga ang totoo sa buhay at uh, dahil nandun sila usually they are high uh, high high school and college uh, students so they they are able to they, their exposure or their research no uh, for the meaning of life ay nakikita na nila during that stage hopefully no uh, ang expectation by the time that people are young adults no Uh, yung sa atin 23 and above no my half, my half age they have their own faith kasi their conversion experience happens during adolescence in their search and by the time that they are young adults uh, the expectation is they have their own faith alam na nila ko ang kanilang pananampalataya yung kanilang pinaniniwalaan uh, ang kahit yung saan sila na denominasyon, no, uh, tatayo, no, or, or even the, how, how they express, how they express the ways that they express themselves in their relationships, in their families, in society, because of course, expectedly, ang young adults are already their own uh, careers, no? kahit na they're starting out with their own careers, but some already progress by the time they're 30, no? sa atin, ang 30 ngayon is the marrying age. No? And, and of course, as they reach uh, 25, may mga ano na sila, may, may mga anak na sila. They are now a young family. Okay? Next slide. Ayan, the sociological perspectives of young adults. Can we next slide? Ayan, ito yung mga pahalan ng mga young adult uh, kami na may panganak between 1945 to 1960. We are called baby boomers. No? Ito yung mga naipanganak right after the Second World 
war. And so the experience was, uh, well, mal malaking issue no ng peace, yung bang parang natuto ng uh, ang mundo na we we seek for peace. Ito kaya ang laking, ano nun, uh, topic nung even in, in theological circles, yung, yung shalom or peace, no? world peace. The postmoderns, ito yung marami, marami sa atin <laughs> ngayon, eh, 1961 to 1981. The postmoderns, alam nyo, ang modernism is a... Uh, um, ang nagro-rule in the modern modern era is science pero sa postmoderns no truth has become relative yan ang number one na ano ng postmodernism ibig sabihin from where you stand from where you stand determines what you see kung bara kung bara may kanya-kanyang katotohanan kanya-kanya yung ano uh, prinsipyo yung yung bang the yung differences have been marked, medyo inaccept ang mga differences, kanya-kanya tayong pananaw, ganyan, mas uh, ano tayo, hindi absolute truth <laughs> uh, ng sinesearch, kundi what is true for you may not be true for me, but we respect each other's truth. Yun ang modern wisdom. And then in 1982, ito na yung millennials. Generation Y, I Generation, and Generation M. A. Largely, these generations were the ones that were affected by technology. No, yeah. So, uh, na, uh, well, from from my own experience, ang mga ang mga millennial, Generation Y, Generation I Generation, Generation M. E. are talagang mga ano to, mga techy, mga na ano na sila ng media. No? The, yung, yung malaking influence sa kanila and even their own spirituality medyo um, yun, yun, ito rin yung uh, na influence ng mga uh, praise and worship, yung mga ganyan, other forms of worship, yun, ito yung uh, yung mga virtual, yung mga nasa atin, na-experience natin lahat yun nung time ng pandemic because the the times called uh, for a different way of communication, of relating to one another, ganyan. So, this, this, uh, those, this, those many of our young adults are so different from us <laughs> older adults or middle adults. Next is take, next book. Slide. Okay, so generational studies. Ito naman generational studies. No? Ito are, para bang, chances are, when, when we uh, relate to one another in church, in church especially, I, we are an intergeneration. No? Yung... Uh, mabuti sa atin kasi ganun. Sa Amerika kasi matatunda na lang laman halos ng church. Pero sa atin, no, importante yung religious studies kasi maiintindihan natin kung ano ang character ng bawat generation. Ano yung kultura nila at influences nila because the generations are different. No? Sayang hindi ako nagkaanak. Siguro kung nagkaanak ako, nako, ibang-iba ang kultura ko dun sa mga Anak ko, no? because they are a different generation. Question, should we be focus, focusing on generations? Or are we seeing a change of culture that will impact all our ways of doing ministry? Ito talaga isang, ano to, isang importanting tanong sa atin ngayon, when we do we focus on generations, yun yun yung, yung sinasabi na kanina ng mga social, sociologists, yung boomers, mil, postmoderns, millennial, mga ganyan. Or, or are we seeing a change of culture that will impact all our ways of doing ministry? Ibig sabihin, uh, pag-aralan ba natin mabuti ang kultura ng mga young adults no? 
para makita natin kung ano ang ministry dapat na para sa kanila. Ibig sabihin, yung konteksto. Yung bang konteksto, ang malaking uh, o importanteng um, factor no? sa ating paggawa ng ministry with young adults. No? Or, uh, do we do we let our traditions as uh, as Methodists tagbawa yun ang mananaig no yung dun sa na basic na ano natin well that's a nice question that's a sociological question maganda siguro pag-usapan natin yan mamaya okay next next slide okay the young adults today ito meron silang feeling ng i am special and they follow their dreams then ito yung sinabi ko muna because these are from the postmodern and uh, they they pass through we pass through the postmodern era yung cultural diversity is assumed no uh, maganda naman ngayon kasi na, na natanggap na natin na hindi tayo pare-pareho no mga iba-ibang lingwahe natin ng mga tribo natin may mga Ilocano may mga Aita may mga Pampangan may mga Tagalog Bisaya ganyan but like I said we are technologically the young adults are technologically hardwired no yung bag sinabi yung hard, uh, hard hardwired ay yung kasi yung uh, talagang bihasang biasa sila sa technology. Sa bahay ngayon, mga pinapanang ngayon, maliliit pa lang na bata, talagang ang gumagamit na ng cellphone at etc. No? And then, this, the pragmatism. No? Yung, yung bang pragmatic, they, they take the truths from experience. No? <laughs> Hindi, they don't take the truths as na itinuturo na absolute truths. No? Uh, yung, kaya maganda rin sa ating ano, sa ating quadrilateral na metodista na nandun talaga yung experience. No? We, because we, we try to uh, yung mga truths na, na ituturo sa atin or the theories that, that we, we learn, we, we try to, sabi nga ni Bishop kanina, totoo ba yan sa iyong karanasan? No? <laughs> are you able uh, did you uh, are you able to experience that or have you experienced it and then ito yung materialistic siguro this is more like a parang observation of the western uh, young adults kasi sa America ang young adults hindi pumupunta sa church <laughs> they are they all hooked with their careers and i don't know um sa observation ko naman dito sa atin sa Pilipinas lalo na sa Methodist Church uh, doon nga bumabalik yung mga ano yung adults eh pagka nagkaroon ng sila ng baby nagkaroon na sila ng maliliit na anak no they see the importance of church and so they they bring their children to church and they themselves become uh, uh, strong or active members of our congregations some some actually are that they are already the church officers but still the materialism dito kasi sa atin nandoon din yung expectation na pag nakarating ka na nakapagtrabaho ka na well magkakaroon ka na ng kotse yun yan so, at kung medyo matatapos na yung yung adult mo dapat nakapagpatayo ka na ng bahay dahil meron ka ng pamilya ganun okay next is like Ito yun, uh, young adulthood is extended, adolescence, there are high, high expectations, and ito yung uh, sexual dis- disconnection. Um, like I said, yan three and four are, are uh, what is this, uh, are related because uh, relationships matter, nagkakaroon ng soulmate. So, yung sex, sexual disconnection is actually more like uh, on adolescence. Yung adolescence, meron yung mga, the, one of the questions of adolescence kasi yung sexual orientation, yung sexual preferences, gender, mga ganyan. Diyan ang talaga, 
uh, and and that that uh, that sexual disconnection happens during adolescence, but but also sometimes it's extended to um, toward young adulthood. No, so um, well, it's an issue that that uh, that, that we are facing also uh, in in our church, but it's also something that that young adults, young adults, no, truly. Face and of course, relationships or soulmates you know, happen during young adulthood. Okay, next. Okay, spiritual hunger. Um, I don't know. Um, for uh, um, your, uh, observation, but uh, this this one, the the writer here uh, feels that there's so much biblical illiteracy. Hindi alam ng ating uh, mga young adults ang kanilang Biblia. Uh, at, at yan, ay yung spiritual, spiritual hunger is real. And then, the personal experience. Yan. Sa ating uh, mga pinitista, ay malaking factor yan sa spirituality natin. Yung personal uh, experience. Uh, but yet, our culture, even our culture, has moral relativism because of postmodernism. And then young adults also desire to serve. No? It's also a time when, dahil nagtatrabaho na sila, meron na silang mga uh, income, may mga panahon din na sila ay gusto nilang magsilbi. In fact, some young adults, some young adults decide to enter the full-time ministry, or they become lay speakers and lay ministers. Itong crime statistics down, uh, well, siguro nga. And better relationships with parents. No? Siguro dahil nagiging young parents na sila, ang mga young adults, no? Ay, na, na-recover nila yung relationship with parents kasi ang time ng pag rebelde ay adolescents during <laughs> their youthhood nagre-rebelde sila pero pag nan mature na sila ng konti because they're now adults, young adults and they become uh, parents themselves they develop better relationships with their parents na-appreciate na nila ganun pala ang hirap na maging magulang <laughs> Okay, next. Ito ay ano, more on an American setting na uh, survey ng ethnicity by age group, no? Yung ages 18 to 29, sa kanila maraming Hispanic no 1829 sa ages for 30 to 49, ang marami ay white. Um, and then sa ages 50 to 92, pinakamarami ang white. Ibig lang, ibig lang sabihin nito dun sa, sa Texas, ang, ang matatanda, marami ang puti. Ang middle, ang middle age, 30 to 49, marami, marami pa rin ang puti. Pero ngayon, in the present, yung ages 18 to 29, ang 45% ay Hispanic. No, ibig sabihin totoo naman pala yung ang daming mga nag-cross ng border <laughs> from Mexico pumunta sa Texas, naging uh, ang Texas na ngayon pinakamarami, almost half are are Hispanic, no, Latino. Okay, next slide. What young adults seek from church? Okay, anong hinihingi ng mga young adults? sa iglesia. Okay? Una, sense of belonging and community. Yung bang, will you be there for me? Kayo ba ay, ano, uh, mapagkakatibalaan ko? Uh, kayo ba ay pro sa akin? Ganyan. So, they want to belong and they want community. Yung young adults. Importante yan na tandaan natin. Pangalawa, Opportunities for involvement in church life. Sabi ko nga nina, young adults, dahil meron na sila, nasa edad na sila na, ano, uh, yung iba nga may mga careers na, e eh, binigyan mo ng, ng opportunity na maging officer o maging member ng committee o ano, involvement nila sa mga church project. 
And then this one, meaningful worship services with experience of the holy. No? Silence is okay, sabi na dito. Kasi syempre, ang young adults, hindi na yung parang mga kabataan na maingay. Maingay na pumapalakpak, maranta, sumisigaw, nagbabanda. Ang, ang young adults, they want the experience of the holy. Sabihin, magkaroon sila ng nang totoong inkwentro no sa sa kabanalan ng Diyos and then spiritual growth and enrichment no uh, yung bang ito gusto sabi niya you incorporate old and new kaya ang prescription sa atin sa ating worship ay blended blended if you blend the old you blend it with the new no para hindi lang praise and worship lahat, hindi rin traditional lahat. So, blended worship. Now, understanding the faith, syempre, mga ano na to, yung adult na to, like I said, if they were searching their faith during adolescence, during young adulthood, alam na nila dapat, no? naiintindihan nila dapat ang kanilang pananampalataya. And of course, here, because there are the crossroads of many things like in their careers, no in in their uh, this love life and in their family life they need guidance and direction mas madali nga silang actually ma mag-guide din yung mga uh, yung mga young adults because they are more level headed more level headed in the sense that their cognitive cognitive uh, cognitive abilities are developed already okay next slide Yan. Ito yung return or not. Ito yung mga factors usually na nakakapag-influence ng young adults da. No? Itong tingnan nyo, yung pastor at saka sermon, hindi naman ano, gaano. Ang talagang pinaka-importante sa kanila ay yung sense of belonging at community, yung people. No? Dapat yung church should be very welcoming sa mga young adults the they 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 should yung bang lalim ng pakikipag-relate na sa isa't isa no yung kaya nga yung CDG the Covenant Discipleship Group patok yan patok yan sa young adults no? because they want to relate with people usually they compare notes tungkol sa mga bata sa pag, pagpapalaki ng anak maganan or sa pag-aasawa ganyan and then significantly mga metodista yata to pangalawang importante dito nakikita ay yung music no yun na uh, in fact uh, yung theology daw natin sabi ni Melba Magay ay nandoon talaga embedded sa mga hymns natin and then of course the message or the sermon and the pastor himself or herself is a significant person for our factor for the returning or not returning of young adults no okay next is slide yun this yung uh, iniisa-isa yung mga uh, factors kanina yung spiritual hunger at worship they don't feel they have contact with god they will do whatever Uh, it takes for them to have a sense of contact with God, yun, yung deeper uh, inner spirituality. If liturgy could present people with an experience of Christ, with contact with Jesus, they would come closer to what people are actually seeking today. Okay? So, importante yung sa liturgia, yung experience of Christ and contact with Jesus. Okay? Next slide. Ito yung other suppliers willing to shop. Dito naman, 20-somethings were nearly 70% more likely than older adults to strongly assert that if they cannot find a local church that will help them become more like Christ, they will find people and groups that will connect with them instead of a local church. Ito, si Barna is a researcher talaga in, in religious uh, matters. Eh, ito, the, 
mga young adults daw, many are shoppers. Ibig sabihin, naghahanap sila ng church na kung saan talagang uh, naghahanap sila yung natutulungan sila. Uh, yung hindi nila makukuha yung ano, no, uh, doon sa church na kinaroroonan yung, 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 yung spirituality na hinahanap nila and in the experience with the belongingness in community, maghanap sila ng iba na pupuntahan. No? Marami namin sa, young, uh, sa, sa youth, ganyan, pero lalo na seryoso kasi mga young adults already no? in a more stable uh, church. Uh, membership. So, naghahanap sila ng mas nakakatugon sa kanilang pangangailangan. No? Uh, ako, I hate to say it, pero may dalawang pamangkin ako na ganyan ang nangyari. Naghanap sila ng church. Kasi nasun, sabi nila, doon kami mag-grow. So, yung isa pumunta sa CCF, si Kalil, uh, very involved na siya sa church uh, worship leader doon. At saka si Eboy, ay pumunta sa Victory, siya rin ang music uh, minister nila doon. So, but, but of course, it's a challenge for us uh, to, to involve our young adults and to help them find the meaning that they are looking for. Then, uh, ito house churches. Sometimes they don't house, house churches. Sila nagagawa ng maliit na church or they are in parang what what uh, hooks uh, young adults are small groups small groups and then individuals then ito na yung mga influence ng mga ibang miyembro at ibang mga tao na nami-meet sila and that's where the challenge for our young adults in church to be approachable and friendly and you go out the burg your way to make uh, young adults belong. Of course, the web pages. Ito ngayon, marami na kasi ngayon. Lala ng pandemia, por tayo naka-hook sa internet. Doon na tayo, ang iba na-hook na doon sa mga websites na yan. Doon na sila nagsisimba lagi. No? Ako talaga, during the dur- <laughs> during the pandemic, nagsisimba ako kay Bishop Pittorio. <laughs> Yun. At saka si Matan- Pastor Mat Anthony Antonio. Yan, mga web page na ako, tinatangpilig ko paglinggo doon na maragsisimba during the time of the pandemic. Okay. Next slide. Yun. Twenty-somethings struggle to stay alive in church. Ito yung exodus. No? Church as teen disengaged during the twenties. Yan ang pinakamarami, 61. No? Church as teen, nag-church nag, nag, nung teenager, spiritually active at age 29. At mas nag, uh, naging active pa, nag-remain active 20% lang. Yung never church as a teenager is still unconnected 19. So ang maganda yung ibig sabihin ng teenager ay nag-church sila, disengaged during the 20s, nag-drop out sa church. Nako, ito na yung ano phenomenon noon na pagkamayaf na sila wala na sila sa church. Yung pala ang majority na nangyayari, no? And that's why many of us are missing the young adults in church. Okay? Basing, basic principles of young adult ministry. Ito yung basic principles ng young adult ministry. First, evangelize young adults. Sabihin, sabi nga natin kagina, they want an encounter, a real encounter with Christ. So, yeah, and that's and we call that evangelism. We foster or make opportunities for young adults to to have a relationship, a real active relationship with Christ. And then nurture their spiritual life. We know what nurturing is. That's uh, discipleship, discipling them. No, dial uh, medyo mature na sila. Either you're already young adults. Ma, ano sila eh, actually, madali silang pausap. Yung mga 
mga matters na na important matters na hinaharap sa spirituality ay talagang magandang ano sa kanila topics sa kanila and connect with community they should become uh, members of the church and they are involved in the mission and the projects of the church or sense of community no kaya nga siguro isa yan sa mga kailangan natin gawin na kasi sa mga young people and dali nilang i-gather at ano together of course yung mga young adults parami na sila yung mga pinagkakabalahan yung career yung family ganyan na small family but still no mamaya makikita natin what are the model that we can do to connect with the young adults and then prepare them for leadership no kasi alam naman natin na ayun in, especially in the present context ng ating churches bumaba ba nang bumaba ng age no ng ano uh, ng mga leaders no? mga leaders pati nga mga pastors ng mga big churches eh mga young adult na ngayon no Uh, it is surprising actually that district superintendents marami ay yung yung uh, nagkakaroon na rin ng DST yung adults, no? Yan. Less than 35 years old. No? So prepare them for leadership. Next. Okay, you grow. How do you grow a uh, young adult ministry? Okay, first is start with a small core team of committed people. Uh, mag-identify ka, siguro, not really much of an organizing them, but more on, more on a cohesive, select a cohesive group of young adults, no? And support of someone. Bigyan mo sila ng in-charge na, na staff person, pwede yung jacunisa, pwede yung mismo yung pastor, and then initial social events with food <laughs> to get acquainted and to generate ideas. Because they are young adults, hindi mo naman sila kailangang turuan masyado, alam na nila kung anong gusto nila, so magkaroon kayo ng social events. No? In fact, like halimbawa, uh, birthday parties na monthly para sa mga nagbe-birthday na young adults at so doon. No? Mara, sa alam ko nga, yung uh, ibang niyang adults, yung, sige, look, kumain naman tayo sa labas. No? Ganyan, dahil, dahil sa okasyon, no? usually during holidays, no? kasi walang, walang paso, ganyan. Or build around a regular, consistent event. No? Like, for example, no, uh, you can establish a, a CDG, no? a regular or a bible uh, bible study or a sunday school for young adults which is only every sunday and then you have this s3 spiritual social and service yung programming mo yan ang tatlong uh, dimensions yung mga activities mo spiritual social and then service especially in adults kasi may mga young professionals na willing to give the services like uh, yung model yung medical optical dental evangelistic and legal and vi pa yung veterinary no ganyan young adults no should have this kind of program and occasional regional or citywide events oh mahilig ang mga young adults ano tara tara punta tayo sa Israel Oh, yan pumunta tayo sa Hong Kong o oh, mag-shop tayo sa Bangkok mga ganyan oh, oh. or kung minsan may mga ano talaga yung mga event to, uh, concert ni ni Don Moe naku halatang matanda na ako yung mga concert ng mga uh, oh, uh, ano rin uh, artista no? like kay kay Sarah Hieronimo, mga ganyan. And then, okay, next is next slide. A Sabbath school, of course, this is, uh, the, this is Sunday school, Sunday school or Bible study. Then principles. What are some principles, principles of young adult ministry? Emphasize on dialogue, okay? Sabi nga natin, <laughs> Um, mga young adults talagang hindi na kagaya na yung people lang na, na, or children na tinuturuan mo lang ng derecho. Here, you dialogue. 
and then entertain all entertain all questions respect the all questions it's a safe environment kahit medyo tagilid yung mga tanong o yung mga issues sometimes yung bang gusto natin i-avoid and yet for young adult because they're already adult uh, and then emphasize the sharing of experience uh, karon sila ng oh, sa akin ganito yan eh yung yan kung may mga uh, issues sila that they face they they share from their experience and then they need teachers who are authentic dapat yung mga magtuturo ng yung adults ay totoo maalam knowledgeable and flappable and have a sense of humor ibig sabihin hindi yung unflappable hindi madali-dali namang magpalit ng <laughs> ng kanyang prinsipyo o opinion to no? importante yun kahit na kung minsan they don't agree with your opinion but you're still, you have your own no as a teacher and then have a sense of humor no dapat kasi kung Ganun kasi kung minsan nagkakaroon ng, especially if they disagree, <laughs> ang hirap maging, uh, no, it's, it's good to have a sense of humor and say, well, we can take each other's uh, opinions and we're entitled to that. Mga ganyan. Or, okay, baka magkapatayan pa that, that tayo dito. Sabi mo, pag hindi tayo, <laughs> uh, we, have to, we do not try to tolerate each other's uh, opinions. Okay, next. Ito hindi na natin to pupunin. We go to the second. We go to the second. Ito ito yung topics pala, possible topics. Dating, sex, relationships, no? Ngayon nagiging complicated din eh dahil diyan sa issue ng sexuality and gender. Iging complicated yung topic na yan. Faith and fulfillment at work. Yan, sabi ko nga dahil uh, they are new in the workforce, not at their careers. And then like, we have already discussed spirituality and ito, making a difference. Importante yun eh. Sa ating contribution, we already, when uh, young adults already talk about ano ang magiging legacy ko. What will be my legacy in this world? How do I make a difference? Important yan na topic sa young adults. And understanding scripture and church teaching. No? Even if they went through confirmation class, it's still true that yung mga questions na yung adulthood kasi, malalim, kailangan nila ng guidance ng scripture at anong tinuturo ng iglesia patungkol sa mga issues ng buhay. Okay. Okay, reaching out in mission to young adults. Okay. Ito yun. Uh, retreats. Importante sa mga adults yung retreats. No? Kasi sometimes they cannot commit to regular activities. But during times of retreat, no? you need time away, openness to change. Focus on relationship with Christ, worship and prayer, and building a community. And napunta sa isip ko nito, yung Emmaus Walk. Yung Emmaus Walk is a, is a program na I think it's for three days, no? Uh, uh, three days. Na it's, the, it's a time away and there is a teaching and there also a building community doon. And to me, it's a very effective retreat. Itong Emmaus Walk Retreat. Uh, we can actually recommend our young adults to attend this Emmaus Walk Retreat. It has all these uh, elements. Of course, you can organize a different retreat on your church. No? Kung may magaling na retreat master. Okay, next. Ito naman, yung coffee houses, ito yung sinasabi ko marina, yung mga, may mga young adult dyan na mahilig pa rin sa jamming, live music, short talk, question and answer, and social period. Maganda rin yan na program, a coffee house ministry. Okay, next, for, for young adults. Okay, wala. 
ito naman yung local local ito yung sinasabi ko ngayon na, na service projects like ay mga young adults kasi pwede yung mag-model yung uh, medical optical dental pwede ring may project sila kasi meron na silang mga ito may mga kwarta or pwede mag-mission trip sila ito ginagawa ng mga Amerikano to pupunta sa Pilipinas ng on a mission trip siguro sa atin Maganda rin yun, magmi-mission sa mga Aita, sa mga church ng mga Fisher Rail, Fisher Fox, mga ganyan. Okay? Sabi niya dito, plan well, learn about the project and context first and pray without ceasing and then have theological reflection during and after the service project. In, in fact, uh, yung karaban nga na sinasabi ni Bishop Torrio, ay maganda sana na kung ang mga mayas natin magkakaroon talaga ng regular caravan project. Okay. Next. Ayan. For college students, kasi marami pa rin yung young adult na nasa college uh, age, no? stay in contact with those away, yung wala sila, malayo sila sa kanilang mga pinanggalingang uh, high school o lugar, develop student ministry in campus, and don't forget about faculty and staff. Okay? So ito yung sa college age, we do uh, campus ministries. Okay? Next. May mga chaplains na tayo ngayon sa mga eskwela uh, natin, especially sa colleges. It's hard to get pulpit time for oral announcements no? and uh, young adults don't tend to read the bulletin if they are yet to say. And so the best practice is, is if you want to invite personal invitation, email and texts and the web page or Facebook. Ito ang gagamitin natin ngayon to communicate with young adults. Personal invitation and emails and texts and web page or your uh, Facebook page. Okay, next. Okay, do, do we have time for the second? Yung second kasi is more of a review of the last time that I, uh, I lectured on the Maya my caravan uh, so this is the one that is the the one that i just uh, presented to you is the new one thing ito gusto ko lang pahapiwan to ng konte anong oras to ba dahil it's more of a review but i would like us to look at the models no of young adult ministry sige here Gather a team, like I said, collect information. Don't sa church yan eh. Next, next. Next slide. Yan. Gather a short term. Ito yung core group na ano na natin. Uh, this group only needs to commit to a few meetings to help look at the issues and develop a plan. A plan of uh, a, a plan for youth ministry. A uh, young adult ministry. Next. Okay. Yung information na kailangan mo, ano ba yung tungkol sa kongregasyon? No? What's already happening for young adults? Where are they already connected to the parish? And what, how is the parish doing with young adults to encounter? Mga questions na kailangan because you are researching no? asa na mga young adults. May kad, pangalawa, yung from the young adults through interviews and informal conversation, ito yung kung mag-uumpisa ka pa lang, kailangan mo talaga tanungin kung ano ba gusto ng mga uh, young adults dito sa church natin. No? Ano yung mga interest nila, anong pangangailangan nila. And then, the third is, from nearby parishes and planning groups and campus ministries, what are our neighbors doing that you could connect with or learn learn from ano yung mga programa ng iba no tungkol sa yang adult ministry na pwede natin uh, gayahin ganun okay next 
Then evaluate and strategize. Okay? Evaluate. Look at the information collected. Consider the needs of the parish and young adults as well as the staff volunteer and material resources available. Madalas ito yata hindi masyadong nangyayari kasi ano ba ang gusto natin na ano bang gusto natin gawin ano yung pangangailangan ng mga young adults no uh, at ano yung mga resources available sabi yan ito be focused and realistic and then develop your plan ito yung small group na nagpa-plan okay next okay ito yung sinasabi ko i think uh, we we you know on, in, in these four models there are four models na pinapakita ang unang model ay yung event model alam ko maraming churches na ganyan ang muna ang ginagawa ng young adults uh, they organize events halimbawa uh, valentines party oh ayan or during independence day may gagawin. Meron uh, isang event na gagawin sila during uh, Simbang Gabi or Christmas, my Christmas party. Now, those are simply events. They siguro mga four events, parang quarterly, four events during the year, mga significant events. Oh, alimbawa, nung uh, ang, ano yung mga SI Bank, tinatawag sa kanila, meron silang young adult conference during Christmas Institute time eh. Yung mga young adults, that's also an event. So ito, a coordinating committee plans and publicizes this event, then young adults can come when they can but don't have to join. So uh, ito yung event-oriented, yung talagang sa mga events lang sila nag kikita yung mga young adults. They, they really are not a regular group, but they gather together during events. Okay? Next. Ito yung one group model. Ito naman yung one group model. Ito yung model ng Mayaf ng ngayon na meron siyang uh, United Methodist Young Adult Group sa church. Isang group lang yan. Isang group lang yan. A group led by a small team meets on a regular basis. Meetings could be could take on uh, study, prayer, social, or service function, or might be a combination of this. And people can join the group at any time. I think this is the one that is most uh, used <laughs> sa ating mga metodista, the one group model. Hindi malaking group of No, pero yung mga active lang na yung adults, sila yung ano, they group together and plan out their activities of study, prayer, socials, or service. And then, the one group model offers a stability that can contribute to a growth over time but must pay special attention to welcoming new members to avoid cliquishness. Kasi dahil ito ay mga ang member ng one group model ay yung mga active talaga na yung adults sa church, syempre may tendency na maging clickish sila. But, they should pay attention na kung may mga bago na mga young adults na coming to church for the first time or coming back after a long while, then they should be open no? and involve them in the Maya. Yan yung tinatawag na natin ng Maya uh, model. Okay. Next model is the interest or lifestyle group model. Ito naman, maliliit lang na grupo, pero parang sabi natin prayer partners. Prayer partners sila mga young adults dahil kanya-kanyang interest. No? Yung mga singles together, no? Kasi alam natin na mga young adults, yung iba single pa hanggang, you know, tumatanda lang sila, live single pa rin. So they group together yung mga single, yung mga uh, sports model, yung mga hiking, may hilig sa, ano, sa TikTok, may hilig sa dance, ganyan. Mayroon pa nga yung, noong araw yung, yung tawag doon, uh, yung 
dancing ng mga popular dances no oh meron din naman yung ang hilig na eh, eh sa model group or as uh, travel group may hilig sila mag-travel no pupunta sa Palawan mamay pupunta sa Mindanao or pupunta sa ganun no or scripture study yung mga mahilig naman sa Bible study they they group together pero ito iba-ibang grupo maraming grupo ng mga young adults kanya-kanyang interest kahit na kung minsan paris lang isang paris lang ganun uh, so the important thing is uh, yung mga young adults meron silang ano ma, they are they are connected to the church you know, in some way by their interest group. Okay, next. And the last one is the small Christian community model. Okay? Ito is more on sabi ng outreach, outreach and mission. Yung bang gusto nilang uh, mag-concentrate on helping a community. And so yung small Christian community gagawa sila doon ito yung this is a very important uh, ng para bang witness ministry witness ministry yung bang gagawa sila ng ano magko-concentrate sila mag-project on on building a mission congregation na project ng young adults no? so doon sila yung mga latang interesado na na young adults i-gather nila to to concentrate on that project which is a uh, mission project and and their interaction with the community with the community ayun ang importante sabi natin siguro may medyo parang basic christian communities bcc ng uh, Roman catholic church but it's also nice for young adults to to be able to start a, a christian community na sila yung ano alam ko sa ibang mga konferensya yung Methodist men gumagawa, yung iba naman mga women. But young adults can also have this model na, na i-decide nila na sila ay mag-mission sa isang specific community and they will build that community no? as by their efforts as young adults. I think uh, I will stop here because those are the models. The next kasi na mga mga slides ay uh, ulit doon sa first na lecture.